Good morning, colleagues, friends, and community. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I can't breathe. I keep experiencing this phrase, the mental, emotional, psychological manifestation of what is normally a physical reaction to choking, loss of breath, struggling to fill one's lungs with air so that the exercise of inhaling and exhaling comfortably continues. I experience this phrase as a cry for help, a black man or woman's last words, a plea to be released from the pressure to no avail. Black folks in this country are suffocating, literally as many have taken their last breath at the hands of police brutality and metaphorically as a community who was struggling under the weight of racism. The events that have transpired over the past few days and nights highlight the reality that the COVID-19 pandemic has not erased the reality that racism still exists. White supremacy and white supremacists are not following a stay at home order. Racism hasn't been quarantined. We don't have drive through locations to test for racism. It simply shows up in overt and covert ways. And while we anxiously await a vaccination to protect against the coronavirus, we are not looking for a vaccination for racism because that would mean removing power and privilege, acknowledging the hate that people carry in the very fabric of their souls for black folks. As protesters have organized in cities across this country, including right here in the city of Portland, it is painfully clear that black folks are tired and that empty words and promises for justice and reform are no longer enough. The black community is demanding action. And while the vast majority of the black community would not condone violence and looting, the reality is that when over 400 years of oppression continue to play out in our communities, there is a tipping point. A little bit of education. Ironically, the origin of the word loot is Hindi. It found its way into the English language via the British Empire's centuries-long rampage of theft and bloodshed in India. So if you only talk about looting when people take stuff from stores and not when capitalism steals from workers every day, or imperialism destroys lives to grab resources, or settler colonialism violently oppresses whole groups for generations, then guess what? You're having the wrong conversation. We need to verbalize and acknowledge the fullness of the term anti-blackness, the fear, devaluation, or abuse of black people. And anti-blackness is in full effect in our current, con current context. And a moment of truth, black folks can no longer be responsible for carrying the burden of white fragility, white guilt, trying to fix a system that was never designed for them in the first place, and simultaneously mourning the death and destruction happening in our communities. As a leader for the, Office of the, uh, for the Office of Equity and Human Rights at the City of Portland, I am committed to continuing to engage in action both internally and externally. The Office of Equity and Human Rights has set a strong foundation for equity work in the City of Portland, and the City has voiced their commitment. In 2015, Council adopted the Citywide Racial Equity Goals and Strategies. There's been support for Bureau Racial Equity Plans. We have training for all City employees with our Racial Equity 101. We have connection to community through various advisory bodies and committees and our recent response to COVID-19 efforts. But this is not enough. We have to take what is on paper and make it happen. And one single office within our city structure can't do this alone. There must be a collective acknowledgement of the pain and trauma the black community is facing and a collective commitment to working with the black community to find actionable steps that are authentic and sustainable. I would offer that our city, and in fact our state, allow the space for black folks to grieve, to feel the weariness, frustration, fear, and victimization that accompanies watching the treacherous balance of life and death play out across our news and media outlets, and that we get ready for what comes next, the removal of systems that were designed to exclude, and the replacement of those systems with ones that are designed to empower. Thank you.